guess what? It's question and answer Wednesday. Let's do this, baby! Woo! Now what? Everything is ruined. Something's broken. Unbelievable. Can't have nothing nice. I don't know what's on fire. <laughs> Housekeeping items to begin with. Gear review seemed to be a big hit as of Sunday, so every Sunday we'll have a gear review. For those very concerned about gear reviews, I'm not just trying to get brand new gear, never use it, and say it's good or bad. I really wanted to just showcase gear that I have, gear that I use. Some of it might be newer, because I just got it and I'm really liking it, and some of it might be really old stuff. Even finds at yard sales, thrift stores, that's the kind of stuff I want to showcase. So. Gear review, probably not the best term for that. I think I named it, if I can remember off the top of my head, three minutes to better gear. That seems more appropriate. Last housekeeping item, we have a special guest today, Dan Valinsky. That's your cue. Oh, great. He didn't know I was gonna put him on the camera, but I'm gonna make him be on the camera. I don't know for how long, we only have one chair out here. Can you just squat like, go down a little bit? That's what she said. <laughs> and that quick, he is already done. He's done. He, he, people can't control themselves on camera. Could you do a poor man's bushcraft kit? Yes, I'm gonna do a video on that. I have an idea specifically for that, so we're going to do that uh, when it gets a little bit warmer, because I need warmer weather, because you'll just see when it happens. It'll be titled Poor Man's Bushcraft Kit. Can you show us how to wrestle a bear? If you get me a bear, I'll wrestle it. Are you sure that hat wasn't made from your beard and not the raccoon? It blended in with your beard perfectly. When I was editing, I knew that somebody was gonna ask that because it literally blended in with my beard perfectly. I promise that wasn't beard hair, it was raccoon hair. But if I did get my beard hair and glue it on felt and then wore the hat, I don't think you'd be able to tell a difference. So it's always an option. They might be for sale at coldcrackerbushcraft.com under the shop tab. Hi Dan, what's your preferred rucksack for bushcraft? I think any pack that has a large single compartment in the center that you can pack most of your sleeping and shelter equipment is most ideal, along with one or two external pockets. I personally like the external pockets on packs because I can keep my water bottle and some of the gear I need to get to quickly. Just remember, I normally carry a haversack along with me, so the gear I'm really going to need and I'm going to use the most is in that haversack. It doesn't bother me to have my backpack and haversack on. If I'm going to traverse a long distance or over rough terrain, I might put that haversack in my backpack and then pop it out when I get to camp. So any type of bag with a large center pocket to fill it up. Also, canvas is probably gonna be your best bet. You really shop at Target? You're a girly man. Man card, please. I really need a man card after everything I've done for you guys? Come on, I rollerbladed drunk in the streets with a pair of scissors and lawn clippers. I rode my mini bike drunk through the woods, almost crashed it, started a biker gang. I think that's just more than enough. Target, I can say I'm a little bit of a fan of Target, nothing like my wife. She is the queen of Target, needs to be there, loves it. I get somewhat irate after five seconds in the store. Where do you carry your medical kit or water purifier or flashlight? Because I couldn't live without those specific things. I mean, I wouldn't be as much fun or relaxed without those things. I never see you use those items. So to go down the list, flashlights, I do usually carry a single flashlight and a headlamp. So that I always have with me, especially for like overnight trips. It just makes life so much easier. Medical kit, honestly, I don't always carry a medical kit. If you take a wilderness first aid course, you're really taught how to use everything in your kit and that you have with you to sustain yourself until you can get professional medical help. So that's somewhat of the approach I take with that. Any longer trips, I might take just some pills for diarrhea or for upset stomachs, headaches. And if I think it's gonna be really high risk that I'm not gonna be able to get medical attention anytime soon, maybe a tourniquet. I think they might be some good things. As far as for water purifiers, I'm gonna talk about that in a future video. Boiling water is what I do. That's what I do the majority of the time, summer months, I do use a water purifier. So, and I just started that last year, but I think it's a viable method. So we'll talk about that in future videos. So that's my take on that stuff. What's the most interesting thing that ever wandered into your shelter while trapping animals? I never had anything that tried to get inside my shelter. The only time I ever had a run in with an animal while sleeping was I was in a hammock. Well, two times, one time, 
I had a possum crawl underneath my hammock and I felt something rub against me. That's how close I was actually to the ground. And I like got startled. I looked out and the possum was waddling away. Another time. Well, to give you a little short run, laying in his wool blanket right in the middle of uh, the deer run. Deer comes along, tramples him. Middle <laughs> of the night, true story. I did start screaming and yelling, what just, who stepped on me? Like, what is happening? A deer did trample over me. I think he over-exaggerated a little bit with the deer run, but obviously that was a deer run because a deer came through. They were my only two incidents. Any thoughts on Frost River versus Duluth? I think it's a personal preference. Both companies make really good packs. I like Frost River a little bit more. I think there's a little bit more consistency with their gear from what I experienced, but that doesn't mean it's definitely true. I just like Frost River just a tad bit more. Did you have your YouTube channel before you did the show alone? Yes, I had maybe a hundred and some videos before I did the show, and, and it wasn't even after the show that I picked up my pace with the YouTube. It was eh, about eight months after, so here I am now. YouTuber. Some, no, the reason I put this in is because it makes me laugh and there's another one that just made me laugh. So it was worthwhile to have this in here. Someone didn't like you saying your name. Seriously, that's dumb. Go ahead and say your name. They can just suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> this is for the person who was like, why do you have to say your name at the end of videos? Because I like saying Dan Wolwak. This was Dan Wolwak. Kovalunix or Capital? Dan Wolak likes Capital a little bit more than Kovalunix. Was there anything about clothing that was prohibited while you were on a loan? Dan Wolak only took clothes that were on the list for a loan. They give you a specific list of clothing you can take and then they check your clothing. The only little bit of drama with that before I launched was I had suspenders on my Filson pants and they wanted them removed. I put up a fight, I got to keep the suspenders. Living towards the middle of Pennsylvania, are you a Pittsburgh sports fan or... They had or drug out. Do you follow those filthy animals in Philly? Oh, well you gotta, why do you gotta take it to that level? Also, being one of the 127th poster, 1,730, 60 view, so that's not right, but I'll give, they want a free t-shirt, that's where it goes. I'll give you a free t-shirt just for putting that much effort in. <laughs> like, you gotta private message me, okay? Private message me, I'll get you a t-shirt. Can I use a tomahawk as well, as well as an ax? I wanted to say instead of an ax. That question itself has me confused. I'm assuming you're saying can use a tomahawk in place of an ax. A tomahawk usually doesn't do what an ax does. I just never got the groove of it. I just, I can't get into it. My view, I have a tomahawk. I carry it all the time with my haversack along with the ax. 99.9% .9 of the time I use the ax over the tomahawk. Just seems useless. You know at the beginning you were like tomahawk. Yeah, I oh, swallowed a bug. <laughs> <laughs> what do you recommend to carry on high mountain hiking for survival? You need to be proficient with a map and compass because you need to figure out how to get off that mountain. There's not much you're gonna do if you're in a bad situation up above the tree line. If you're prepared with shelter, just wait out a night and then understand how to use a map and compass. Focus on shelter, understand the use of a map and compass to get yourself down to the tree line, and then it's the basic, fire, shelter, water stuff. You should do a video on an airplane crash survival situation. What do you think? That's from somebody I know, Dave. We're gonna do it, Dave, and we're gonna use your plane for it. It's gonna be sick. Dan Wolek says so. Have you ever hunted with a blowgun? You mean like this kind of blowgun? Hell yes. Ah, oh, kidding me. Uh, what is the problem? Uh, you shot understand. me in the neck. It's, I think it's fine. Oh, it yeah. seems fine. Oh, God. It's not even deep. It's only like two inches deep. You're gonna be fine. Can I finish this video? It's, I have to get this done. Oh God. Can you just be quiet for two minutes? Oh God. What is the better hard shell moisture protection for a rifle, shotgun, and handgun as far as in-camp firearm storage? Any brand recommendations would be welcome. I'll be honest, I don't know really what you're looking for in this, except maybe like what kind of hard case you can keep your firearms in when you're at camp. I'm a Pelican guy. Pelican came out with a new series, Pelican Light. They are awesome. So if you want to go ahead and get one of those, uh, you will not regret it. The only thing that's going to regret it is your pocketbook for a little bit, but they are just seriously awesome cases. But as far as for camp, if you can just let the firearm out, like in a lot of cases when I come to the yurt, my firearm I hang up in the yurt. It is su subject to weather, so there is times that I get a little bit of rust, a little bit of moisture on the thing. As long as you keep it oiled up really well and you get that rust off, 
that's it. So oil is really the key if it's gonna be subject to a lot of bad weather. If you ever happen to travel to Germany, we'll pick you up at the airport in the Netherlands, Germany and or Denmark, have a fire and camp in the woods, cook in a Dutch oven, bring out the old pagan sites and go to shooting range, drink beer in public, be allowed to go by horse cart within one half mile, very 18th century, and show you a glimpse of what this country has to offer. What do you say? I say it's awesome. When am I gonna get to Germany though? I don't have that really scheduled right away, but maybe we should set that up. Bushcrafting or homesteading? Similarity, can you be quiet two seconds? We'll get you to the hospital as soon as we're done, okay? Do you have any dogs? I don't personally have any dogs. I did have dogs from when I was young up until I was a couple years ago, my last dog passed away. Only reason I don't have a dog right now is just, my life is just hectic with work. It's just, there's a lot going on right now. So to throw a dog in the mix, I'm just not gonna have time to put into having a dog. Goat more knives. Never heard of them. But I will say, if you're just trying to put a plug out for your knives, that was a good way to do it. What do you think about serrations on a survival knife? Can you please stop with the, please. This guy is gonna wear me out. He's not gonna bleed out. It didn't hit one of his main arteries. It's just his neck. Favorite hot sauce. I don't have a favorite, I, I like hot sauce. I like hot sauce on just about anything. I actually ate hot sauce on hard boiled eggs this past weekend, I like it. There's nothing that I'm like, that's the exact hot sauce I need. Dan, do you have any hot sauce that you love? Um, only the ones from... Oh, I, we do have, we do have favorite hot sauces. See, that's why I bring you along. Tell them what our favorite hot sauce is. Cooking with Al. Yeah, cooking with Al. Check out his channel, Cooking with Al. Al's hot sauces, they're awesome. Well, I don't know if they're Al's hot sauce, oh. but they're the place Al works for, they're awesome. They are awesome hot sauces. That's my favorite. Can or Mama Wool Wax. Oh, Wool my mom hot makes sauce. hot sauce too, so everybody does like that. <laughs> Could you do some videos on Dutch oven cooking slash baking? I did, if you look under my cooking series, I have some videos around Dutch oven use, and I made some bread, and I don't remember what else I made in there, but check that out. I am gonna bring back cooking with Cole Cracker because people loved it, I loved it, and we like to eat, so I'm gonna take that to the next level. I'm gonna start working on that here shortly, getting some new videos out with some new food. If anybody has any specific questions of things they want cooked, leave it down in the comments below. Along the lines of cooking, do you have any suggestions on a bushcraft cookbook or have one in the works? If not, would you consider putting one together? I love that idea. Yes. Yes, I will. Even if I have to self-publish it just to get the information out to you guys. I'm running a scout camp and we'd love a video on a bow saw use care and lashings. I have a video on bow saw, use of bow saw, kerf, and I have a couple lashing videos. Check them out in the search on my channel. They're all there. How do you deal with ticks in general? I just pick them off me. Like I literally, there's nothing I really do to try to combat it. I just figure it's just part of being out here. So I pick them off if they get on me. I was wondering if you're getting more coal cracker by Battle Horse Knives in stock. We are not, we are starting our own knife line. So that's coming along really well. They should be on sale very soon. We're just finalizing the processes and they're gonna be awesome. They're not like just being figured out like the guy I'm working with on this he knows his shit. It's gonna be awesome. I promise you that. Oh, this is a three popper. Now, why do you get to ask three questions and everybody else only allowed one? I know you said you don't like most rain gear, but what's your opinion on waterproof hats instead of hoods? I don't think there's anything wrong with a nice wide brim hat. It's fine. I like hoods a little bit more. It keeps the water just off my neck and you seem just a little bit drier. And I, I just always been a hood person since a little kid. I always liked hoodies and things like that. So hood is probably what I pick more often than not. What's better, nylon tarps or oilskin tarps or question mark? Oilskin tarps, super rugged, super heavy duty, great for that wintertime camping situation. They just take such a beating. Everybody I know that has oilskin loves them and they can just beat the crap out of them. So that's the whole upside with oilskin. I will say that this year I am going to get, and I actually ordered one today and I just got one this past weekend, Silni tarps. 
I'm gonna play around with them for the summer for the simple reason that I'm usually never camping right next to a campfire in the summer. So do I need that extra weight and durability from the oil skin? I think it's very situational. If I'm like taking my hammock and I'm just gonna be hanging out and I know there's nothing too crazy going on, I think Silni is gonna be the ticket. If it's still gonna be a summertime camp and I'm busting brush and not sure what I'm getting into, I might have to use that to drag firewood or build shelters or gather shelter material, oil skin's gonna be the way to go. So I would say between either of those. But I will also say that I have been using just the El Cheapo blue tarps, actually the camouflage color tarps. They seem to work really well. So just the plasticky tarps, I mean, as long as the water stays off me, I'm happy. And question number three from the same individual, this is like this whole question and answer became centered around your needs for all these questions. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't mind it. That's what it's all about, answering your questions. I mean, more than three would have been a little bit obnoxious. Number three, what's the most cutting tools you've ever carried on your person at one time? Bonus point if you make a video wearing yourself, wearing every blade you own. Here's why that wouldn't happen. I can't fit every blade I own on my person, so I just couldn't even do a video like that. I normally have my fixed blade knife, my ax, and a pocket knife. And then additionally to that, if I have some type of saw, a makatagan or a hook knife, and maybe an extra little like carving style knife. But that would be it. So what did that come out to? Five, four, five, something like that. Not much more than that. Tom Diebel, will there be pie at future classes? Of course there's pie, Tom, come on. If that's gonna get you to come out to a class, Tom, by all means we'll have pie. We do cook in a bushcraft class, it's like that, a pie. Yeah. We cook more than anybody ever eats. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So we'll have pie here for you, Tom. Sure, pie. What's a good bushcraft ax that won't break the bank? No, you want something brand new, never used, Husqvarna. They have very good handles on them. The quality seems really well. They hold an edge really long and they sharpen up really easily. So that would be my go-to for that. Do you carry a machete? If so, what type is your favorite one to carry? I have a 12 inch military machete that my uncle bought me when I was like 10. I do carry it once in a while in the dead of summer in case I have to chop through like thorns or something. It's very specific to certain utility use. So I don't use it all that much, but it was a 12 inch military machete. It was awesome. And I still like the thing. I just don't find as much of a use. If you know how to use an ax and a knife, you're good. I bought a flint and steel kit off of you. Should I carry my urban survival kit? Thank you for purchasing that. Number two, I hope you enjoy it. Number three, by all means carry in that kit. The good thing with flint and steel is that once you make your first fire, you can make char, and then you always are gonna have fire. You're never gonna wear out your flint and steel kit, so the only problem you need to worry about is losing it, and if you have a fire and you can make charred material, you're always gonna be able to affect more fires. Someone didn't like you saying your name. <laughs> Why are you catering to one freak? Show him the bird. <laughs> Dan Wolak was catering to one freak at that. Now Dan Wolak's gonna keep saying his name the rest of this video. I like the two people caught on to that. Wow, wow. Why is your shirt inside out in this video? Are there naughty words on it? Not naughty words. Um, some shirt, I don't know. There's certain shirts I just wear inside out. I think it's because that shirt that I had on, I looked back in the video actually, was a blue shirt. It came from like an industrial plant around the area. So I didn't just want this big logo sticking out. So I just wear it inside out. Also, if I have some shirt that's crazy, that I'm just like, well, what kind of logo's on that? Specifically Salvation Army. You know when you go down the line and you feel the shirts for like the softest shirt, you find one of them that has a crazy logo on it, just wear it inside out. And then people ask you, well, your shirt inside out. Well, it's because I have crazy logos on it. What was the biggest influence in your life that made you the man you are today? Did you emulate someone or is bushcrafting God-given? I'm gonna say just a God-given skill. I did a lot of work to get to the point where I'm at, is how I feel about it. A lot of reading, a lot of trial and error, a lot of sucky nights outside. So there's a lot of things that I put time into to get to where I'm at with everything. And um, I think it was just a lot of hard work on mine and I just, a love for the outdoors. So just being outside and enjoying this out here is really just what kept driving me forward. I feel like I had a booger hanging out of my nose. Is there much difference in ferro rods? Yeah, yeah. Huge difference, um, hard soft rods, big small rods, like a whole plethora of different decisions. My thing is to carry a little bit larger of a ferrocerium rod and carry a softer rod. Just when you scrape that, a ton of material comes off, it's the way to go. So there is definitely a big difference. If you want a really good rod, check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com. Click shop, go to fire starting devices, ferrocerium rod. <laughs> That's my plug. I might've plugged myself earlier, but Dan Wolak's gonna plug himself again. 
What do you do every time you go to the yurt? Ever find any new creepy crawlers or critters to clean out? Arrival setup routine. So just opening it up, laying out my sleeping gear, getting the stove lit up, and then I'm good to go for the most part. What about an episode for newbies having to start from scratch with only a knife, fire starter, axe, and tarp? I think if you watch any of my videos in general, just of what we're doing, you can really go, even if you're not a newbie, you can just pick up on, hey, we need to get a shelter, how to set the shelter up, some cutting techniques, how to get your fire going. So ferro rod, tarp, and a knife, I mean, you really could do a lot with that. Of course, you're gonna throw a sleeping bag or a wool blanket into that mix, pretty easy. I could think about doing a video, I don't know how I'd outline that, but I could think about that. I really like this question and answer Wednesday thing. I really like it too. Really getting to know you and you'd be fun to hang out with around the fire, though I still can't grow a decent beard of 53. So I guess I have to ask the question, what's the meaning of life? Now you people are really getting deep on it. Really deep, difficult. That's a very difficult question to answer. This is what I can say. Because I think everybody has their ups and downs where they just hate life, then they love life. But this is where I find the most consistency. You need to do things that you love, you need to do things that make you happy, and you need to find some time for yourself every day. So if a half hour a day means going to the gym, reading a book, maybe just taking a quick walk, you need to give yourself that. That's not being selfish, that's giving yourself time to recuperate and refocus on things you need to do. I understand that a lot of people say, well, I can't just go out and do exactly what I love. You can. There's always time to change something that you're doing that you don't like. No matter what situation you're in, I just truly believe that. It might suck having to do it, and change what you're doing right now, but there's always opportunity for change and growth, and I'm a huge proponent of that. So if you can make yourself a better person, it's gonna make your life better. That's about all I can really say for that. That's a good ending point also. That was a really deep question. I hope that I just answered that a little bit. I don't think anybody can really answer that totally 100% and be on page, but um, this was fun. I had a good time. I think that it was a great episode. I know Dan's car is probably on fire out at the parking area, so it's gonna be fun to go out to that. And uh, I think that's about it. Dan, you have anything else? No. Just waiting for him to come back and screen on the camera. What else you got? I don't really, no, nothing. <laughs> no, not much going on up in here. All right, so that was Dan Wolwak and Dan Van Linsky with Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Hope you enjoyed this. As always, check us out at Cold Cracker Bushcraft. This was Dan Wolwak and Dan Wolwak and Dan Wolwak. Till next week. What do you think, good? Yeah, great. I wish I could actually shot you in the neck. Yeah, Because that would have been hilarious. It would have My been. luck though, you know where that would have went. Right Jugular. In the jugular. Huh? jugular. Huh? So I don't know, what do you want to do? I don't know, sounds like a bush drinking day to me. Well, do you have, I, don't, I don't have anything. Oh, we always have something. Not like some brown liquor. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna die, you're bush drinking. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. I drink a lot of that, actually. I love Jack. Oh. <sighs> Brings back the days. And you can't remember. <laughs> it's just like yesterday. <laughs> you're like, you're so bush drunk now, you're gonna chop off yeah. your legs. Just drink, just drink a little bit. Darling. <laughs>